Hello everyone, let me show you a quick way in uh, Cinema 4D scene nodes on how to create this. And it's uh, very simple, and in the process we're going to learn uh, one specific node and a way to set up things so we can create object manager generators. So let's just create a new blank scene, and uh, the basis for this is an object group. So go and type object group object. I can't teach you how to type. So here it is, object group. And just drag it in here, right? Make sure it's the one that's called object group, nothing else. So you can close this now. Now um, you can go here and you can double click and get your node editor. But I have my own layout. So I'm going to select this and uh, we are going to put just one node in here so that we can create that. Now let's begin with a couple of input objects. Number one, I'm going to use a disk as a surface to distribute those uh, circles. And of course, a circle that is lying on the XZ plane. So with a circle selected, go to the object and set it on the XZ plane. Now, how can we get these two objects to be read by this node setup so that we can do something with them? The way to do that is, first of all, I'm going to put these as children. So we have child one and child two. You need to go to the object group node graph, and you need to go here and right click and just add an input, clicking on the add new input. So there you go. Here's an input. The next thing you need to do is right click on this input and go to the edit port because we want to tell the node system that this is expecting an object and uh, don't be afraid of this uh, interface just go here where it says scene port mode and set this to object that's it just go and close it so this is expecting an object but an object itself if you select uh, any object in the object manager it has some colors basic visibilities coordinates uh, the object parameters and all sorts of things so we need to tell this input which parameters of a potential object we want to use. And uh, we are going to use, right click, go to add nested port. And if you go down to this fly up menu, you'll find the object bundle. This object bundle has all the data an object can provide to us. And all we need in this particular case is the geometry. And now you will see that we have this nested input called geometry. And this is going to read, because it's the first input we added, I can just go and name it uh, one. I double click and uh, edit that. This is one. And uh, this is going to read the first, depending on what is higher on this list. If you have more than one of these inputs, I'm going to go and add another one. So right click. Let's go and add a new input. Again, let's uh, right click on it and go to edit port scene port mode let's go to object close this let's name this two and right click on the two go to add nested port and go to the object bundle and add some geometry so this now reads the second object in your hierarchy if you take this and you change the hierarchy level then this is going to be the first one this is going to be the second one so just make sure you name them appropriately so you don't have any problems now, the node we're going to use to do this is the distribution. And I'm going to use the, go down here, surface scaled blue noise distribution. Let's bring it in here and see what uh, this uh, provides us with. Now, you see that uh, this is a generic node. If you right click and toggle the node type, this will create one of those nodes where it allows you to link objects. And let's open the parameters and see what this does. The op expects the object that we are going to clone, the circle, the one that's going to create those little bubbles. And that is the second one over here. This over here is the full object bundle. So let's go here and put this over here. 
So now, this is going to distribute whatever is the second object, and it's going to distribute it, because it's in surface scaled blue noise mode, on the geometry of whatever we input in here. So you can take the geometry from the first input, which is the disk, and put it over here. And all you have to do is take this op, which is the combination of everything that has been generated, and output it in our generator. And you can see these huge circles now. Again, the way this works is that anything that is a second child of the hierarchy, so the circle in this particular case, needs to go in the op because it's the clone. And uh, the cloner is the surface scaled blue noise. And it's set to surface scaled blue noise and requires a surface because it's called surface scaled blue noise. And we need to put a geometry of an object in order to distribute on. Now, one last thing you need to do is when you're using this, and it has various parameters here, for example, the maximum size, minimum size, and all that, these are essentially multipliers. And you need to set this circle to have a radius of 1 so that the circles are going to be adjacent. And now you can see that we get this little bubbly shape. Now, let's select the surface scaled blue noise node. Let's open up a bit more space in our viewport. And let's go and play with the parameters to see how we can make this look a bit better. First of all, maximum size is the largest size of circle this is going to create. And the minimum size is the smallest one. I'm going to set the minimum to zero. And I'm going to set the maximum, let's say, to 40. So we get now these circles distributed so they don't overlap each other. And uh, what happens is that it's going to try and fill the gaps using a number of circles at different scales. Currently, we have only 100 of these. So let's increase this to 3,000. So we get a lot of tightly packed little circles. The other thing, uh, which seems counterintuitive, but it actually works, is this improved packing. Now, you would assume that the improved packing will become better as it grows, but it has to do with the accuracy of the adjacency of these circles, as far as I understand it. In order for these circles not to pop, because now, if I take the disk and move it in and out, you will see that, depending on its size, it's going to generate these circles. But we see all this popping. And that's because it's trying its best to make the circles be very accurate. But we don't want accuracy, we just want stability. So select this and set the improved packing to zero. And you can see they're all white now. And now if I go to the disk and change the size, you will see that we don't get popping. We just get these growing bigger and smaller. And you can go and adjust the maximum sizes, maybe you want the maximum size to be 20 instead of 40, and uh, all that nice stuff. And there are some other uh, parameters. You can change the distance between them, so they are not adjacent, but you can create all sorts of polka dot shapes and all that. Now that the setup is ready, you may want to expose some of these uh, parameters uh, to your generator, because in the generator now, you don't have any of these parameters. So the best way to do this, for example, the sample count, if you press Control or Command on your Mac and click on this, it will expose it over here on the node. Let's get the minimum size, the maximum size, the distance, and maybe the seed. Anyway, uh, let's assume that these are the ones I want. Now all you have to do is just take each and every one of these, go here and just propagate these ports. And the propagation is going to expose that parameter on the generator itself. There are ways to group these and do all sorts of interesting things, but I'm not going to deal with that right now. So now I select this, I have the operator which has all my parameters here. From this point onwards, you don't need the node interface, so you can always double click to get it. Let's go back to my startup layout. And now we have a fully functional generator. Let's call this guy Bubbly. Bubbly. And uh, we can add, as a first child, the object we want to put these on, and as a second child, what we want to clone. And of course, you'll ask me, what if we don't want uh, circles and we want spheres? Well, we're going to do that in a moment. Now, one thing I want you to pay attention to is that this is generating a bunch of splines. 
So you would assume that if you get an extrude object and set it to Y and set this to, let's say, 20, and you make this a child, that you will get extrusions. You don't. You get only the first object that appears over there. Now, if you select the extrude and say hierarchical, then you're going to get everything. But there's also that multiplier based on the scale because it's just scaling the objects. Therefore, the product of that is going to be scaled up. So don't use hierarchical unless this is what you want to do. And everything uh, should work. This is not that bad. You can create some interesting things. What I would say is that instead of uh, using the hierarchical unless you want it, all you have to do is get a connect object, deselect the weld. We don't want any welding to occur and make sure your bubbly is under this. So this is going to generate a single spline and uh, all the scaling and all that is going to be eliminated. It just takes a geometry. And now you have your nice little generator. Let's put the distance zero. Let's go closer here and let's go and change maybe the number or you can go to the disk or you can move it around and create these things. Now, again, instead of a circle, maybe you want a sphere. So let's go and generate a sphere. Let's make sure the sphere is one because that is the, let's say, baseline number so that all the scaling is going to work. You can remove the circle from here and put the sphere as a second child. And now you have exactly the same thing using spheres, hemispheres or other objects. And uh, this is uh, not a bad effect. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, it gives you an opportunity to get into nodes a bit. It's not the easiest thing on the planet. But it's uh, very interesting, especially if you are technically inclined and uh, curious. Uh, let me know what you think. Toodaloo!